In this video, we're going to start with our populating autocomplete text view, our hands-on part of it. We're going to find some source data and create a DTO. A DTO, or data transfer object, is a collection of attributes that describe something. In other words, it's a noun. Our inspiration for our DTO attributes will come directly from the source data. So what I've done is I've gone to the plantplaces.com JSON feed, and I'll put this URL in the YouTube comments. And I'm searching on Redbud. I could also search on uh, Maple if I want, or Oak, or any of those. And you see that the data that follows below is a structured data source that's describing several different types of Redbuds or Maples or Oaks, whatever we're putting in. I'll put back in Redbud because we have a limited number of Redbuds. It's kind of easy to see. Now we're looking at the raw, we're, we're looking at basically the HTML output here, uh, which is going to ignore white space. Let me control you, and we can look at the page source in Chrome, and this is going to show it to us in a in a more organized format. So you see that we have a little bit of header information and a little bit of footer information, and then we have. Uh, details. So if we take out the header and the footer, we see we have about 13 unique types of Redbud. So we'll talk more about JSON structure when we get into JSON parsing. But for now, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in the text view and I'm going to click on the viewer tab. And what we're going to see is that these are our 13 different Redbuds. And if I expand, you're going to see that we have some kind of global unique identifier here called ID genus, species, cultivar, and common name. This might not be a complete list of everything that describes a plant, but it's at least enough to get us started. So if we want something called a plant or a plant DTO, uh, these are five good attributes we could have. A global unique identifier, a genus, a species, a cultivar, and a common name. So now what we want to do is we want to create this DTO. I'm going to go to Android Studio. And one thing I'll strongly encourage you, make a separate package for your DTOs. Put all your DTOs in a separate package so that it is clear what is a DTO. So far in the project, I've only done some user interface, some activities and layouts, and I have it here in this package. Uh, but I'm going to want to make a new separate package for my DTOs. So I say new package. And we're going to keep a lot of it the same as what we have up above. So nw15s305.plantplaces.com, and then we'll say .dto. Okay. So this will keep uh, like a package, like the name package sounds like. This is going to keep everything nice and organized. Now I'm going to right click. I'm going to say new Java class, and uh, we're just going to call this plant. We could call it plant or plant DTO. As a matter of fact, what the heck, let's go ahead and call it Plant DTO, and I'm going to choose OK. OK, so uh, we have a few things. We're going to say int GUID for global unique identifier, uh, and then we're going to say string genus, string species, string cultivar, string common. OK, now getters and setters are a common paradigm. They allow access to the attributes that we've just declared and their methods. We don't have to create those methods individually, though. What we can do is we can have Android Studio do the work for us. I can right click and say generate, and then I'm going to say getter and setter. And then it says, OK, which getters and setters? I'm going to select all, and then I'm going to choose OK. And we see that what it's done now is it has created getters and setters for each of my attributes. Now, the one other thing I'm going to want to do, well, first of all, let me just, it looks like I had my cursor in a funny place, so let me just reorganize a bit. One other thing I'm going to want to do is make a toString method. The toString method is the only method we're going to have in the DTO that does not begin with get or set. And the two string simply says, if I want to represent this object as a string, what should it look like? So I'm going to say public void two string, and it should return a string. I'll just say genus plus space plus species plus space plus cultivar 
plus space plus common. And then I'll start that line off with return. So if we, oops, sorry, sorry, that should be public string to string. So if we want to represent this object as a string, it's going to be the genus, the species, the cultivar, and the common name. Now you could probably make a couple suggestions here. First of all, I should use a, a string builder to put the string together instead of the concatenation with the plus. Uh, that's one recommendation. Second recommendation, you could also say that I should invoke get genus, get species, get cultivar, get common. Uh, that's a fairly good recommendation. And also, I should probably enhance my Java doc at least on this class itself. So let me go ahead and do that. This class represents the attributes that describe a plant. So we'll leave it at that uh, for the moment. This at least gives us enough where we can start thinking about the next step, which is our interface. And why do we have to do the DTO first? Well, a lot of the concept with object-oriented programming is that we're passing objects around. And objects are essentially collections of attributes that go together. So the DTO is defining those attributes that go together. The DTO is going to be a, a parameter or a return value or both in the methods that make up the interface. So we might pass in an object of this DTO, we might get that DTO in return. But in any case, the DTO is a necessary prerequisite to creating our interface and stub. So we'll leave this video with that and we'll start with our interface and stub in our next video. I'll see you then. Thank you.